Scarlet, back with her little kitten. At the Bondi Clinic, Scarlet is fiercely guarding her three-day-old kittens. Hey, sweetie. So tiny. It's a little leg, huh? Oh. Owner Wendy and her family have grave concerns about one of the little girl kittens, Amari. Normally in a vet clinic, the earliest you ever see a cat is at around six or maybe even eight weeks of age. To see these little kittens so young, it's very much out of the ordinary. So, what's happened? Because these guys are, have only just been born. Right? Yes, they have. Um, one was the last one that came out. Um, she's come out with a twisted leg, which I'm really concerned about. When Wendy first brings this kitten out, I look at its legs and straight away know whatever it has, it's serious. That's a very rare thing to see in a kitten, just to have that leg twisted and, and hanging like that. Essentially, if you look at this leg here, at the base, it, it bends up, which yeah. is kind of like her ankle joints. Yeah. And here, it goes the opposite way. Yeah. The clearest way of putting it is that if Amari was a person, she'd be able to bend her foot right around and actually scratch the back of her calf muscle with her toes. That's pretty scary. But she was born this way, wasn't she? Yes, that's right. Yeah. I had tears streaming down my eyes looking at it. People have told you that she should be put down. Quite a few vets around my area said they should, you should euthanise her straight away. I refuse to because I love, love the cats. Um, no, I'll do no matter what to save her. I'll do what I can. Mm. I mean, it's obviously a pretty dramatic yeah. issue that she has. to Bundaberg in Queensland and there's a scene that plays out here that's been happening since dinosaurs roamed the earth and one of my ranger mates gave me a call and she said you got to get up here now so that's where I'm headed because this is something I don't want to miss. Tim Faulkner has been called away from the Australian Reptile Park to witness an exciting event. G'day. Hey Tim. How are you? Good. Mm. Great, you come to Monopo. Oh, it's nice to be here. Yeah, it's a busy time here. We've got turtles galore, so we're at the moment nesting and hatching turtles. Judging by all of our visitors that we get here, we get people that come back over and over again, so I think Tim's going to think it's a pretty special place. Where are we going to head? I reckon we'll go up north. Yeah? And have a bit of patrol. OK. Yeah? This was an opportunity that was too good to pass up. Loggerheads in the wild face a lot of threats. There's long line fishing. There's plastic objects, bags and hard bits of plastic. They swallow and kill them. It's a very good incubating beach. We get really good hatchling success. Yep. And most of the turtles come up into that first grassed area to lay their eggs. Oh, do they? So yeah. they're not going up over the top? No, yeah. loggerheads usually they stay on there. this bottom. Yeah. It's not long before Tim spots a tantalising clue about what's going to happen. An eggshell. A little turtle's hatched from that. And that's tangible evidence that there are babies under here. I haven't seen any signs of life yet, but I know they're here. Now, it's a waiting game. The sun needs to drop. We sit tight, wait for a turtle to walk up on the beach, or little turtles to scurry down the beach. Either way, I'm excited. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris is trying to examine baby kitten Amari under the watchful eye of Mum Scarlet. This is okay by you, Mum? You're gonna take it back, are you? No? It's all right. Good okay, girl, Scarlet. The tiny three-day-old kitten was born with a severely deformed back leg. In all honesty, my big concern at the moment is looking at that leg. Maybe it's just the tip of the iceberg. What I want to do is have a look over her right now and just check there are no other little problems because Quite often, if you have a deformity, you can have other issues there as well. 
We'll just have a look in the roof of her mouth, just to check there are no holes there. A classic location for a genetic abnormality is a cleft palate. So it's important to look inside the mouth. It's actually pretty smooth in there. Yeah. Let me just have a little listen to her chest. Thankfully though, listening to Amari's heart, the beats sound clear and crisp. <coughs> There's one thing we don't need to check, and that's her little voice box. <laughs> that is fine. Yes, that's good. It's working perfectly, isn't it? After doing a full physical examination on Amari, I'm more confident that what we're looking at isn't a genetic abnormality, but I can't be sure. The only way to be sure is with an X-ray. We'll be back, and then um, I can work out a plan. Yep, excellent. Let's cross our fingers, eh? Basically, every vet says that she's got no hope, so I'm really hoping Dr. Chris has an answer for me, and we can save Amari's life. Wow, you can see the line here. This okay, is our so track. Okay, so we got a track. Yeah, exciting. At Monrepo Beach in Queensland, Tim and Ranger Kathy are seeing the first signs that egg-laying loggerhead turtles are nearby. If you look at the flipper marks, you can see they're across like this from each other. So yes. that's a loggerhead turtle. They come up the beach using their front flippers. So you flippers can identify the, the species by the tracks? Yeah, yeah. All we need to do now is follow those tracks and we find a turtle. Hey, look at this. Look, 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 look to the left. Look at that. That's a loggerhead? That is a loggerhead turtle. That's exactly what we're after. First time I've ever seen it this close. This is a loggerhead turtle, and it's pretty easy to see why they have that name. Their head is huge, and those flippers that are so designed for swimming turn into shovels. So she's moving all four flippers. She digs about an arm length down, okay. and it's about two hand spans wide at the bottom, comes up to about one at the top. We picture turtles being these slow, yeah. cruisy creatures, but you're talking 15 minutes to dig a hole, not 15 hours. No, it's, that's um, right. It's a quick process. She's finished the hole, and then she rests her flipper up, and you can just sense that something's about to happen. One egg drops, two egg drops, three, four, five, and soon enough, there's 20 to 30 eggs in the bottom of that chamber. So we'll see if she's got uh, tags, then we'll know if she's been here before. It's an awesome spectacle that attracts visitors from around the world. But Tim and Kathy are here to carry out vital research. Yeah, so she has got a tag, so we know that she's been here before. She's done a couple of breeding seasons. Yep. So yeah, it's great to see her back for another one. Wonderful. Now we know who she is, it's time to have a look at the rest of the body. OK. What did we get? 90... 99.9. Eight, I think. Yep. Yeah, yep. average for our loggerhead girls. Now the mum has to make sure her precious eggs are protected from predators. So you can see all this sand she's yes. dug out. So she's going to fill in over her nest so it's nice and safe. She's laid her eggs, the job's done, and now she's making her way back to the ocean and pretty quick too. But there's still a long night ahead and Tim is desperately hoping the timing is right to see the next stage in the life of these extraordinary turtles. What's happening there? Oh, look, Tim, we're in luck. Look at that. Holy moly. <coughs> at the Bondi Clinic, Chris needs to x-ray tiny, squirming, three-day-old Amari. <coughs> He's going to keep on crawling away. OK, so this doesn't look great, but it's often the best way to keep kitten that's moving from giving us a blurry image on an x-ray. I'm sorry, Amari, this is not what you want, but yes, I've taped you down now. My real hope is that Amari's problem is purely as a result of her being in the womb and being compressed up one end and never having a chance to really stretch that leg out. X-ray. The x-ray will tell me, though, if this problem is actually the cause of a serious bone deformity. If that's the case, this issue will not be easy to fix. So you can see this is the normal leg here, and that's the femur coming down to the tibia and fibula. But when we go to the problem leg, we go femur, tibia, fibula, but then it takes this massive deviation out to the side. We've got tendons, we've got ligaments, We've got muscles that have tightened up and twisted and, and essentially locked that leg into the wrong position. Good girl. 
owner Wendy is anxiously waiting to hear what Chris has discovered. It'll be heartbreaking to see a bad outcome. I'm really hoping for a good outcome. So, I've had a good look at the x-rays. So what we're dealing with is a purely soft tissue problem. So it is something that's just in the tendons, mm -hmm. in the ligaments, in the muscles. Yeah. What we're looking at is something that has probably occurred during her pregnancy. Yeah, so she's been squished up yeah. or so forth, but then yeah. hers not be able to stretch out. Yeah, so she's got essentially what we call twisted leg syndrome. Yep. It's very rare. It occurs in very few kittens, but when it does happen, thankfully, there is something you can do about it. From what I can tell in the x-rays, she's got all the parts of her leg she needs to be normal. You've made my day already. <laughs> <laughs> when this kitten was born just a few days ago, everyone said, put it down. There's no reason for it to live. Yet she looked at them and said, no, I'm gonna make sure this kitten gets a chance. No, you may have saved her life. She clearly sees something in this kitten and sees some sort of hope. My job now is to try to turn that hope into a reality. Okay. Hello, what have you got there? An injured echidna. Oh, okay, yeah. all right. If you'd like to take a seat, I'll let Lisa know that you're here and she'll come out and have a look. Okay, great, Thanks. thank you. Eddie the echidna has been rushed into the Bondi Referral Hospital sash after being rescued from the wine cellar of a suburban home. He was removed from the house and when I took him out, I noticed some blood on my leather gloves and that's why I brought him here so he can have a, a check up by a vet. Hi, Hi. I'm Lisa. Hi, I'm Susie. Oh, you look like a kidna. Yeah. All right, bring him through. I can't remember the last time I treated an echidna. It's not very common that they come in here to sash, so this is gonna be a challenge. Okay, so let's get him out. Oh. <sighs> yeah, he's bleeding from the nose. Oh. I can see blood coming from Eddie's beak and my heart just drops. I'm really worried that this guy has got some serious injuries. He's got a bit of blood on his claws, but I think that's come from his beak. Okay. And there is a chance that he's got some fractures there. It's really distressing to see an animal bleeding and just a little guy like that. Yeah, I just want him to be okay to go back out. So do you think it's likely to be superficial? Or? It's hard to know. The only way that we'll be able to tell is to actually take an x-ray of him. Okay. Uh, and the only way we'll be able to get a good x-ray of him is to, to give him an anaesthetic. Eddie has potentially damaged one of the most important parts of his body. Now, if he has a broken beak and we can't repair it, he's not going to have any chance of survival. OK, chicken. Good girl. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris is starting treatment on little Amari's badly deformed leg. So she may only be three days old, but what mm -hmm. she's going to get is a pretty intense physical workout. Okay. Yes, okay, darling. Kitten physio may sound a little strange, but it is exactly what Amari needs if she's going to be any chance of correcting the position of this leg. If Chris can't straighten the leg, the tiny Tonkinese kitten may never be able to walk properly. So our first goal is to get that leg straight. Mm -hmm. So if we straighten it out Pull there. it out. Yeah. Okay, we let it go. At the root of this problem is the fact that the tendons that are actually meant to be loose enough to allow Amari's ankle to function normally, they're simply too tight. They're pulling that foot right back around. So we push to the point of resistance, which is mm -hmm. right there. And we just Thank hold you. it there for 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. Devoted owner Wendy will have to continue Amari's rigorous treatment at home. You're going to have to be a bit tough here too, because be she is going to scream. let out a few little screams. Yeah. OK. But... It's all for the best, darling. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of hard work, um, a lot of long hours, a lot of having to put up with a little poor little thing crying. But um, I know it's all going to be worth it in the end. So we're going to, in between the stretching, mm -hmm. put her into a splint. You may not be surprised to know that we don't make a lot of <laughs> kitten splints. Really? Yeah. <laughs> There's not a huge market for it. No, so it's going to be um, 
a makeshift Maybe type of... homemade. While the idea of the physio is to try to loosen up those muscles and those tendons, the idea of the splints is to really lock it in position and then get the body used to that leg being in exactly that spot. It's OK, Jake. It's OK. Let's see how she gets around. It's going to be tricky for her, but the hope is that she'll She'll actually have to move this leg through now. Yeah. That'll build up her leg strength. Yeah, okay, but that, that's a really nice start for her now. From being told 24 hours ago that this kitten shouldn't be kept alive to now, within the last 20 minutes, actually seeing real progress, it's quite a transformation. Wendy's really been rewarded for her faith in this little girl. All right. Okay. Big question's going to be whether mum approves. Mm, yeah, she's fine with it. Yeah. Couldn't okay. have thought of a better outcome, hey? She's got a really good chance. Yeah. You know, as a vet, sometimes you do wonder whether once they leave the clinic and go home, whether that work will actually be truly done. But with Wendy, knowing her connection to Amari, you know it's going to happen. And she is going to have to work hard if she is going to get the results she deserves with Amari. Oh, look, Tim, there's hatchlings here. Oh, look wow. at that. You can see the sand up. bubbling a little bit. With all this rain, we've got a bit of a hard surface, so we'll just loosen it up a bit. On Monrepo Beach in Bundaberg, it's time for a new generation of endangered loggerhead turtles to start arriving. We should see the sand start to bubble soon. Little heads appear. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Wow. Holy moly. A female laid her eggs in this spot 60 days ago, and now the babies are starting to emerge. Tonight, watching those females lay their eggs and the hatchlings pop their little heads up. It's a full cycle, and it's truly amazing. I do some special things in my job, but tonight, being here, just about tops it. Here they come. The whole lot are just about to hit me. What a sight. How they tickle. They do tickle. They're everywhere. There's so many of them, and they want out. They want in the ocean. They're almost in the water. Just about there. Wow, oh, that was brilliant. Hey? <laughs> These tiny babies now face a tough battle for survival. Less than one in a thousand of these little hatchlings will make it to be an adult. And they're off. It's hoped that at least some of the females in this group will reach maturity and one day return to Monrepo Beach to lay their own eggs and start the cycle all over again. I have never quite seen anything like that. Yeah. I think it needs to be said, 50% of the world's loggerhead population breeds here, and that's because of the work you guys are doing. I mean, you've been here 20 years, so you're a big part of that, and good on you. Ah, oh, thanks, Tim. Just want to get some x-rays of this guy. Oh, my God, wow. OK, an echidna. Yeah, we don't see them often. Eddie has been rushed into Sash after being rescued from a suburban home. He's bleeding from his beak, so we'll give him an anaesthetic. That way I can have a better look and we can take some x-rays and see if he's broken anything. I know. Poor darling, he's bleeding quite a bit, isn't he? We've got to work pretty quickly here because we're giving him an anaesthetic which is risky and he's bleeding quite a lot and we've got to get to the bottom of it. Wise volunteer Susie is trying her best to stay positive. I'm totally hoping that he's going to be fine, that his x-rays come back all clear and that it's just a bit of superficial bleeding that can be stopped up and that he can go and be released tonight. I'm really hoping that I don't see any broken bones in these x-rays. If I do, I don't think Eddie will stand a chance at surviving in the wild. All right, so this is it. Eddie's future depends on this one. I'm looking for fractures, any breaks in the bones, any abnormalities. But at the moment, I can't really find any breaks, any areas where there are dislocations. And I think Eddie looks like he's in the clear. 
Looks like Eddie's just had a nosebleed. The nose and beak of an echidna is a very vascular area, so any bump or knock can cause a lot of bleeding. I'm just really happy that there is nothing broken. All right, Elise, so he is one lucky boy. Great, good news. And it looks like the bleeding has stopped as well, so that is great. Him lying so still has allowed the wound to clot, so hopefully now he's not going to rummage that nose into anything and start the bleeding up again, but I'm really happy that he hasn't got any permanent damage and whatever is done should just heal up. Let's wake him up. I always get nervous at this part. And buddy, you wake up. It's coming around now. There you go, buddy. Hey, Eddie. You're a good boy. Lisa can now share the results of Eddie's x-rays with the very anxious Susie. Hi. Hi. How'd it go? OK, so... That's good news. Everything is fine. Oh, thank God. OK. <laughs> Excellent. It looks like it's just superficial. OK. And he should be just fine for release. Excellent. All right, that makes me feel so much better. Thank you. All righty, so you're happy for him to be released tonight? I, I think it's much safer if you keep him overnight. That way you know for sure that that nose isn't going to start bleeding again. OK, great. He's such a lucky boy. I mean, he could have had a broken jaw. And the fact that he's only got superficial wounds means that he can be released and that just is the happy ending we all wanted for our very special visitor here at SASH. Well, I'm absolutely stoked because he's going to be fine. So he's going back into the wild where he belongs and it's happy days. Good luck. All right. Hope it all goes well. Yes, thank you very much. See you, Eddie. Bye, buddy. Feel better. I could not have hoped for a better outcome for this little Aussie battler. He's back with Susie. Makes me so happy that he will stand a great chance to lead a long, healthy life in the wild where he belongs. You are one lucky little guy. Let's go. Been wondering how you've been going. Good. Come on through. Let's go. Come on, Isaac. Wendy and Isaac have brought their one-week-old kitten Amari back to the Bondi Clinic. It's been a couple of days since I've seen Amari, so I'm very keen to see just how she's coped with that splint. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Chris had to use a cotton bud as a makeshift splint on the tiny kitten's badly deformed leg. The unknown for me as I'm taking this splint off is how have her muscles and her tendons reacted to being put in what for them is an unnatural position. Yeah, look, the good news is that we're now more comfortable in that straight position. We've managed to correct that twist. Why don't we see if she can actually move around all by herself? Yeah. She's moving a lot better though. She is, yeah. See, the, the will is really there. This, this foot wants to come through. The final challenge for Amari's leg is to get into that right angled position with her feet upwards. That way her toes can actually grab the ground as she moves that leg forward and she might just walk like a normal cat. So, just like we did a few days ago, we're going to start with just a little bit of physio, just to get it comfortable. We've made really good progress in just a couple of days, but in many respects, we've had to. This is truly a race against time. We have to get her body used to this new leg position before she gets bigger, and her weight means more force is going through these legs. This time, we need something with a right angle. OK. So we're going to use a specimen container. You're going to get more creative for me. Yep. The next stage in Amari's treatment is a second splint. You'll see in a minute, mate. This time to get her paw in the correct position. Oh, I kind of understand it now. Yeah, you're getting it? Getting it. She's got a bit of a way to go mm -hmm. yet. She just has to get used to that leg position yep. and get the strength from that. Yep. But okay. she's already lifting it up and she's already keen to move it through. And yeah. for her now, walking should actually become easier yeah. if she can handle this new position. Yeah. 
And she's a fighter, a big time fighter, and she will continue to fight. And I suppose she beckons you a nice little warm, warm bed, hey? And then go in, you go there. Such friendly little pups. Gorgeous. Margarita and Jerry have arrived at Sash with three little strays. They're kissing each other. <laughs> It's a cute little family. The Good Samaritans found the three terrified Papillon pups running on a busy road. I hate to think what would have happened if we hadn't found them because no one was stopping and um, they obviously needed help because they could easily have been run over. Hi. 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 Nice to meet you. Yes. What have we got here? Three, three well, we haven't got any names. <laughs> just three gorgeous dogs. When you found them, they were just... Running, running on the road, road yeah. Okay. yeah. We often get stray dogs here at Sash. We get one, maybe two, but to get three all together, now that's unheard of. Bye, darling. We'll do our best. Bye, darling. It's a reluctant goodbye, but Margarita is hoping emergency vet Dr Lisa Chimes can help these little lost puppies. These dogs were found running in a really busy road, so even though they look okay, it is possible that they have injuries. Now, I need to take a close look at them and make sure that they're okay. All right, guys. Let me just have a quick look at you, okay? See if you're all well. Come here. That's the way. I'm listening to their heart and lungs and I'm checking their colour and having a feel of their bellies. And everything is checking out okay. These three babies are very lucky. Okay, you look pretty good. And we just gotta find your owners. What I'm really hoping is that these dogs have a microchip. I'm scanning the first dog and I'm looking everywhere and there's just no sign of one. So I move on to the next dog. Nothing. It's not good. Two out of three dogs don't have a microchip. Now I'm really starting to worry that these dogs may not have an owner that I can find. Come on, Cliffy. Can you come? Up we go. 16-month-old Cliff is being rushed into the Bondi Clinic after eating something very dangerous. Good. Hello, I'm Kath. I called about the rat oh, poison. This is Cliff. Yes, this is Cliff. Hello, Cliff. We'll better get you in straight away. Okay, well, let's just find Chris. Thanks. Besotted owner Kath is terrified the Australian Shepherd has ingested a potentially deadly dose of rat poison. I took my dog Cliff to work today, which I've done a few times lately. Um, he was rummaging behind uh, some furniture and he came out with a packet of blue powder and he pierced it and there was some in his mouth and then I looked at it and noticed that it was rat poison and here we are. How long ago do you think he ate it? He ate it at five past eleven. Alright. So, so 50 minutes ago. Alright. There are lots of different varieties of rat bait. The type that Cliff has eaten is bromodialone. This one is tricky because they only need one dose for it to cause potentially fatal bleeding. So. Yeah, the obvious concern with, with rat bait is it goes into their body and it blocks something called vitamin K, which is what they use in their system to cause their blood to clot. And whilst it doesn't sound like you necessarily need that all the time, each time you, you know, even move your arm or your leg, tiny little bleeds can occur. Mm. And without that vitamin K, those little bleeds can, can cause massive hemorrhages. You don't know how much he ate, though? No, the sachet was about this big. Yeah. Um, and he pierced one side of it and a whole bunch of it fell out. There was a bit of swallowing, but I don't know if he ate maybe a thumbnail's worth yeah. or just got it in his mouth and went, yuck, I don't like it. Yeah. And, uh, and that was that. I rang Neil. Um, he said, you should come in. You've done exactly the right thing in bringing him in when you have, because with this sort of poison, it takes them some time to absorb it. Right. So that the sooner we can act for him, yeah the less a chance there is that he's going to absorb this and he's going to have a blood clotting problem and, yeah. and then a, a bleed. Yeah. Cliff is everything to me. I'm completely obsessed with him, so I just hope that he's okay. You stop eating things you're not supposed to. The real concern I have here is we still have no idea exactly how much rat bait Cliff has eaten. 
the simple fact is that if Cliff has eaten a lot of rat bait, it's currently being absorbed by his system, which means that his blood will very soon have trouble clotting. The sooner you can intervene, the better off he's going to be. Hey, honey. I hope you've got a chip. I know you don't. At SASH, Lisa is desperately trying to identify three puppies found wandering on a busy road. These dogs are in really good condition, so it's obvious that someone loves them very much. But it's really concerning that two out of the three dogs don't have a microchip. I just hope that the third one does. Yes, got a microchip. Yes, we do. I, I feel a huge sense of relief. I just hope now that I can actually get in touch with an owner. Lisa will use the information from the microchip to look up the owner's details, which are held on a statewide database. OK, let's see if we can find these owners. There's no answer, there's no voicemail, so all I can really do is try again later. I just hope I can get hold of them. Microchips are amazing, but it's the owner's responsibility to update their details, and if they haven't done that, there is no way for us to get in touch with them. OK, guys, so this is it. Here you go, hop in there. The Papillon pups will stay at Sash overnight. All right, guys, that's the way. The three little dogs are now getting some R&R &R at Hotel Sash, and now it's my job to try and find their owner, because if I can't, who knows what their future will hold. Let's just remember before I do what I'm about to do that you got yourself into this mess. Yeah. Naughty Cliff has a bad habit of eating things he shouldn't. Let's do it then. Today, his obsession has got him into real strife. The Australian Shepherd has ingested rat bait. The best treatment for dogs that have swallowed rat bait is to make them vomit as quickly as you can. All right, so it doesn't look like much, but in here is enough of a drug called apomorphine to make him vomit. Mm -hmm. But once he does have that, I'd probably recommend we get him down on the ground fairly quickly. OK. Good boy. All right, Cliff. OK, that'll be enough. Good boy. Good boy, Cliff. Good boy. There you go. Owner Kath is extremely worried. She knows that even the smallest amount of bait could cause the 16-month-old to suffer potentially fatal internal bleeding. It's rat poison and uh, it's obviously designed to kill. I've known dogs who've died of ingesting poison and I just hope that we caught it in time. The anxious pacing is really a place we've all been. Right. Mm. Looks like he's starting to feel a bit... Spewy. If Cliff vomits up blue, we know he's eaten a lot of rat bait. And we're about to find out. Okay. Here we go. Any more to come, Cliffy? Yeah. Oh, this one's coming from deeper. Yeah. Get it all out. Cliff, good boy. That was important. You see that? Yeah. I'd be quite concerned if this was a wash with blue. Yeah. And it's not. There's little chunks of blue. Yeah. But if he'd eaten a lot of it, it would stain the entire yeah. okay. vomit. So I'm confident that as soon as we've got to him within an hour, that he hasn't actually absorbed right. enough rat bait for it to be a problem for okay. him. OK. And that, that's, the, that's the really comforting oh, thing. Oh, good. Thank you. It's been quite an effort for Cliff, but thankfully, all the bad stuff inside of him is now outside of him. That look on your face, Cliff, really says it all, isn't it? It's not a good day. I don't know if he's going to want to watch your show anymore. <laughs> you might have lost a few of us. <laughs> Cliff does look pretty helpless right now, but thankfully I can give him an injection to reverse some of this nausea and make him feel a lot better. So he won't exactly be bounding out of here, but at least he won't be projecting himself yes, out of here. Yes, yes. 
and we know he's okay. Yeah. I feel really lucky that we found him before he ate the whole packet because I can't imagine him being sick or not being with me. So I just feel really, really lucky and I can go home knowing that he's fine. Good luck. Yes, thank you very much. Hopefully it'll be the last time we see you for, for a while yes. at least. While Cliff might be leaving here today with slightly sad and confused eyes, it's the eyes of Kath that are always going to need to be on Cliff in the future. No more rat bait. Ever. Guys, come on, relax. Settle down. It's been 24 hours since three little lost dogs were brought into Sash. I've been trying desperately to get in touch with their owner. It's just really upsetting that either they've gone on holidays or they haven't changed their details on the microchip register and now we can't get in touch with them. Hey guys, just settle down. Settle down. We've called these little dogs the Three Musketeers. They are absolutely adorable. Come on. But unfortunately, they can't stay at Sash forever. So I've been in touch with the Animal Welfare League and they're going to take these little musketeers in and try desperately to find their owner. And if they can't, they'll try and find them a brand new home. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm all right. Hi, guys. So these are the little dogs Hello. I've been telling you about. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Where's your family? Rose from the Animal Welfare League has kindly come over here to try and help us find the owner of these dogs. <coughs> they're clearly loved. Hopefully they're all from the same family and we'll be able to track down the owner of these beloved dogs. All right, so they're all yours. <laughs> Thanks very much. Hey, little all right, handful. Guys. Hey. All right, let's go. Thank you so much. Oh, no, thank you. Good luck. All right, I'll keep you posted. Bye, sweetheart. See you later. Thank you. This way, guys. I really, really hope that she's successful because they're clearly loved and they deserve to be back where they belong. I'll keep you posted. Thank you. Hey, Amari. Well, Chris won't be long. Are you going to have a look at those legs? Hey, we'll see how they're going. At the Bondi Clinic, Wendy and her children Isaac and Imogen have brought in Amari and a couple of her siblings. Oh, what a little splint you've had on. I hope it works, eh? Hey? Little Amari is now six weeks old and it's time to see if there's any improvement in her badly twisted leg. Lots of physio, you know, probably 20 times a day we've been doing stretches and um, with the splints and lots of screaming by her, but um, hopefully it's been all worth it. Now let's put them down, okay? We brought a few others. As Wendy and the kids are walking in with the kittens, I'm thinking, Amari is just one kitten. Why are there three? I guess it's a really good thing that I can't actually pick which is which. <laughs> My challenge for Chris, well, I brought three kittens in today. They're all exactly the same colour, about the same size, and I want Chris to pick which one is Amari. So they are pretty cold there. So if you look at that, he's actually a little boy. <laughs> You're getting a little bit warmer. That's not her? That's not her. Eh? It's you. Is it you, Amari? You girl? Really? Really. But look on those back legs. She's on my sword. Look at that walking. My mind keeps on going back to that moment just a few weeks ago where I was confronted with a kitten with a badly twisted leg and not much hope of survival. That's a very rare thing to see in a kitten, just to have that leg twisted and, and hanging like that. Wow, it's just look almost says. able to bend it right up yeah. on itself there. That's what he said, isn't it, without crying too. She's a little powerhouse though. That, that's a, I'm actually pushing reasonably hard there. I knew from the moment I gave Wendy those instructions about what she had to do with Amari's leg that she'd find it hard and she'd find it confronting because she had to push past Amari's pain threshold. But looking at what she's done, I'm in awe. She's done a remarkable job. I think you've been through enough hurdles for a lifetime in the one. So you can just enjoy the rest of your life like you're enjoying this chin scratch. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way I would have been able to do this without your help. It's been absolutely tremendous and I can't thank you enough. No worries at all. Yeah. I did my bit, but you're the one that, that you know, stared down those people that said she should be put down and said, no, I'm going to give her a chance. So. Well, that's it. I'm a determined one. She was so, so cute. Like, there's no way I could do that to a cat. Yeah. 
Amari has really occupied a really special place in Wendy's heart. She's been so determined, so dogged, and has made sure that Amari has overcome massive obstacles to be here today. And now she's got a life with Amari to look forward to. As for our three little lost puppies, their owners couldn't be located. But they've now found new homes, and Lisa is thrilled. I just love warm and fuzzy outcomes like this. These three little dogs arrived with Margarita and Jerry. We gave him some TLC, some medical treatment, and now these little musketeers have found brand new homes. And that is just the best news ever. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.